fulfillment, satisfaction, validation, you know, all those words that relate to you know, what we felt about our alma mater, uh, how the alma mater felt about itself, what they felt they could do in this game. And I'm just so satisfied because everything that I said and argued for the last 13 weeks in terms of what Michigan was, what Michigan could do, what Ohio State hadn't shown, what Ohio State hadn't proved, and just this game, et cetera, it unfolded perfectly. I couldn't have scripted if unfolding like that. It was well, a great word for it, too, is satisfying. satisfying. It's just so satisfying. Tom Mazaway, good afternoon to you, big guy. What up, fellas? Congratulations. You guys nailed it. I was in doubt. I didn't think they could do it. They did it. I hope they can go all the way. Maz, you're not the only one, so don't, so, so don't feel bad at all. When I say this, the, the people that had questions, I don't have a problem with those people. The people that have questions like Maz that say, hey, you know what? I haven't seen the passing game. I, I haven't really seen it take off, so I don't know if Michigan can win that game. I don't have a problem with those people because it's very true. Michigan's passing game led by J.J. McCarthy, it was subpar all year in terms of down-the-field passing. So that's fair. But those people... They had those same concerns, but talking about Michigan's schedule. Like, we're always excuse with Michigan. Like, well, Michigan's schedule sucks. Well, Ohio State's schedule sucked, too. But you didn't say that about Ohio State. Well, Michigan struggled against Maryland. Well, Ohio State struggled against Maryland. Well, Ohio State struggled against Penn State. Well, Ohio State struggled against Northwestern. And when it's, they struggled against Penn State, oh, they're bored. That was the excuse. Yeah. When they struggled against Northwestern, oh, it was the conditions and the wind and the rain. The other Big Ten, the other Big Ten games for them. It's always an excuse for Ohio State because you guys are just so used to them being dominant, them being that team on offense and defense. When I told you there were no defensive players that you were scared of, there were no more Chase Youngs. There are no more Nick and Joe Bosas. There are no more Denzel Wards. There are no more Jeff Okudas. There are no more Eli Apples and Lattimore's. None of these great players, A.J. Hawks and Bobby Carpenter, may have went a little further back on that one, but they hadn't had those guys. Shazier, there you go, there's one. Hadn't had those guys. You can't name a guy outside of Eichenberg on that Ohio State team that you fear, that you're scared of. They didn't have those world beaters. And, oh, by the way, Ryan Day. Name me the big game that Ryan Day has ever won. Did he, lose, did he beat Oregon last year at the beginning of the season? Did he beat Michigan last year? Did he beat Michigan this year? He can't win a big game. He's born on third, and now he's going backwards. And, and you know what? Too bad Luke Fickle took that deal with uh, Wisconsin because I know Ohio State's fans are wishing he was in the shoe. Oh, they want Urban. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely sure something we're going to get into. You know, when you, when you look at these Michigan wins now, last year and this year, almost look at them like children, right? I mean, which one is your favorite win? I mean, there was something <laughs> special to last year in, in, in you know Jim Harbaugh getting that win, but there was always that question mark. Yeah, okay. You did it with three first-round picks on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, C.J. Stroud had the flu that week. You were at home. Yep. There was excuse after excuse. This year, there are no more excuses. This rivalry has totally flipped. Jim Harbaugh is Ryan Day's daddy, and the series is now owned by Michigan. Definitely, definitely, definitely is the father of that relationship. But you look at it last year, Ryan Armani. Last year we got a chance. We get our first win against Ohio State in, in over 10 years. First win. But we didn't go ham celebrate, like in terms of the social media posts, in terms of on the show, in terms of because everybody was next win. You know, it was a good battle. And also you say, you know what, I don't want to start just celebrating and doing all that yet. You want to see the lit, like you want to see it happen a couple times in a row. You want to make sure it happens again so you know that it's real. Well, this time, yeah, I was going a little wild on social media, and I'm talking stuff to everybody that wants it. I think Michigan in two years, Ryan, we were talking about this. They switched the pendulum of the last 15. And, and, and you know, I think last year you kind of felt like that, right? Yeah. I mean, you felt like uh, there was some sort of toughness thing that, that, that happened. Michigan had all the toughness. You beat them up five rushing touchdowns yeah. on the ground. You physically manhandled them at the line. So you felt the rivalry was turning at that point. And then all the craziness of the offseason with Jim Harbaugh and flirting with the NFL or whatever you want to call it, losing Josh Gaddis, you, you, you're losing all of these – uh, great stud players, yeah. you know, uh, Aiden Hutchinson, Dax Hill, uh, David Ajabo. You're losing these guys to the pros. Uh, you know, what is it really going to be like this year? You've got two new coordinators. You can't name anybody really on defense. Yeah. Uh, offensively, this year, uh, the, both the tight ends were out. Blake Corum was out. 
Uh, the wide receivers really weren't uh, getting it done all season long. I mean, you got to give Jim Harbaugh a lot of credit, and uh, this is his day. Uh, this is his time. This is his program, and that's a that's a program defining win. Yeah, this is arguably the best win in Michigan history as it relates to this rivalry, as it relates to a regular season win. I mean, it is. Frankly, put it is. I mean, if you look at where. It, the state of college football is right now with the NIL deal. You look at how hard it is to win, um, you know, to get to the playoffs. If you look how hard it is uh, to win a rivalry game, especially with the talent level. I mean, the three schools that have the most five stars are Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State. Like, they're the three schools. Michigan's not even close in that. So for Michigan to lose their best defensive player, Mike Morris, mm -hmm. and then their essentially best offensive player, Blake Corum, and still dominate like yep. that. This is two years in a row, Ryan Armani, that Michigan has made Ohio State submit. Like, those players gave up, and you can see when it happened this year, and you can also see when it happened this year. I feel bad for Ohio State. Psych. It was ugly. Hey, man, I'll, I'll tell you. In the second quarter, I really thought uh, Ohio State would start to pull away. I, I was nervous watching that game from the get-go. I'm so proud of the way Jim Harbaugh has coached this year. And I said to you guys earlier this year, it, he's reborn. He, this is the guy – we wanted seven years ago, eight years ago, whenever we hired him. This is the guy. He is coaching at his peak right now. Yeah, he got a team to the Super Bowl, and now he's got his college team on the precipice of great things. Not only that, he steals two Ohio State recruits on the same damn day that he whips the Buckeyes' rear ends uh, that day. He does it without his best running back. Uh, they suited him up, but... He just knew he wasn't going to play. Donovan Edwards got a cast on his hand. He can't catch the ball. It's not going to be good. Well, they should have put two casts on his feet because uh, he took care of business after that. John Harbaugh in Baltimore, his older brother, Jim's older brother, said, congratulations, Jim. You have coached your greatest year ever. That's a hell of a compliment. Mm -hmm. a hell of a compliment. What they say a lot of times in life is in order to have true success, in order to get to where you ultimately want to be, you got to fail. Like, sometimes you can't know exactly who you are and how great you can be until you – I don't want to necessarily use the word rock bottom, but when you plateau out and now you have to redefine yourself. Jim Harbaugh, you look at four years ago. Just look at Jim in the last four years, and this is all about Jim right now. You look at a blowout to Ohio State. You look out to another blowout to Ohio State. Then you look at – which would have – could have been another blowout. Obviously, Ryan Day made those comments that would, would, would spark Jim Harbaugh and pissed him off. Could have been another blowout in the COVID year. To now, you bring in some younger coaches, you open your doors a little bit more to the players, you are listening to what the players have to say and their input a little bit more, having a little bit more fun up there, bringing in some younger guys, some different guys. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the room all the way, and it has to be the Jim Harbaugh way. It just had to be the Michigan way. Now he is coaching his best football, like Matt said, like his brother said, Coach John Harbaugh. He's having fun. Look at the elation and the jubilation on his face at the end of games and press conference. Look at how he's just, no, no. Stop no. right there. We'll show, we'll show you that. We'll yeah. show you that jubilation. Look at how happy he was and how, you know, he really brings the guys together. I mean, they love him. His players he love him. He restructured his contract. Like, all that happened. Yep. Like the rest of the team was. I mean, there was a, it was a team that was very focused and determined. You could really so see it. Reason. Really see it in him. <laughs> Get in here, Mikey. Man, look at my head. It's all, it's all these guys. It's really... Hey, there's another one. <laughs> I mean, he's just I so freaking that. happy. I Mikey, freaking love that, that so much. When I saw that, I can't stop smiling right. after seeing that. It's like a Who dad. want to play it's, for that It's guy. like a proud dad. Yeah. Going, oh into, going into the season last year, the Michigan Wolverines were, in, were ranked 35th. Jim Harbaugh had just restructured his contract, so he was making the all-time low that he's made since he's been in Michigan. And it was speculation from everybody that if this year wasn't – or if that year, last year, wasn't the year – Harbaugh was gone. Harbaugh was going to make the next step. Now, he would step down. They wouldn't fire him, but Harbaugh was gone. Now, here he is <laughs> with a chance to win a national championship for the second straight year in a row. And if you really look at, at what Jim Harbaugh has done, as you mentioned, Braylon, over the last two years, yeah. uh, one of the things that we talked about last week was how confident Jim Harbaugh seemed in yeah. the week leading up to heading down to Columbus and playing Ohio State. And I don't think that is... Uh, like like fake bravado. I think he looked at those guys on film all year long and knew he had a better team. I think he looks across the sidelines and says to himself, 
I'm a way better coach than that guy. He is. And he went into Columbus. He went into that week of practice, and we always talk about it. Uh, whether you have a boss at your job, you are a reflection of your boss's attitude. You are a reflection of your head coach's attitude. You as an employee take that on. And I think those players look at this guy smiling and happy and confident, and they go down to Columbus like that, and they get the job done. Remember at the Big Ten meetings last year, obviously Jim Harbaugh potentially on the verge of getting fired and maybe COVID saved that uh, from happening. Um, but he said, look, we're, we're going to go down. We're going to we are going to beat Ohio State or we are going to die trying. Yeah. That's what he said. And it was a very serious, very poignant. That was a much different attitude from Jim Harbaugh than this year after having done it now and knowing you can do it again. Um, like I said earlier, th- this rivalry has flipped and, and you just you have to give Jim Harbaugh a lot of credit to block out all the noise, block out people like me. I don't know if I ever really wanted Jim Harbaugh fired. I can't remember back because we, 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 we've done so much winning. Right. I can't remember if I wanted that, but I mean to go 0-5 against your rival is unacceptable. Right to, to to lose the way you're doing to Michigan State, unacceptable. So um, you you wanted some changes, but look, 2020 Michigan probably would have lost to Ohio State, but you know what? They didn't. They did not play we'll that year. Know. We, 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 will we, never we will know. never know. We will never know. There are more players on this team. On the think about this. For as much as Ohio State has dominated Michigan over the last 15, 17 years, whatever the case may be. There are more players on Michigan's current roster that do not know what it's like to lose to Ohio State than the opposite. These players do not know what it feels like to lose to Ohio State. They have a different attitude. Freshman, if you're a freshman, sophomore, or junior on this team, you do not know what it's like to to lose to Ohio State. 